I greet everyone today with a universal greetings of peace and paradise and the blessings of God be upon all of you. I greet this greetings to all human beings on the face of this earth. I like to say I greet all people of all different nationalities and all religions. I must always greet my Muslims brothers all around the world that live according to the Holy Quran. As-salamu alaykum, wa rahmatu Allah, wa barakatuh. I like to say, I want to give a message, a player message that Martin Luther King gave 56 years ago. And it's really, to me, is addressed it to People of color, especially the black people. Some people may see it as being racism, but they can see what they want to see because blacks, since the Mayflower brought us over here by force, our forefathers over here by force, we haven't been treated fair. Now, you have these sellout blacks they consider themselves and their families and friends being treated fair because the people who oppress us, they give them what they want to help keep us oppressed. God has sent a lot of messengers, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Rosa Parks, Harriet Tugman, and a lot more to wake up our people nor preached for 120 years telling people it's going to rain. It was a joke to them until God allowed him to complete it. And when he got in that art, everybody wanted to get in, but he couldn't, Noah couldn't let him in if he wanted to let him in. God sent me down here to Charleston, Missouri, Southeast Missouri, the Boot Hill, one of the most prejudiced places I've ever been in my life. And not saying all white people are prejudiced. They have the worst police department, I believe, on the face of this earth. You see, they let this police chief, Robert Bobby Hearns, stay in power only because, not, equal, not that he qualified, only because his uncle, Warren E. Hearns, may he rest in peace, was the governor here in Missouri once upon a time. And his auntie, Warren E. Hearns, wife Betty Hearns was a Missouri state representative which she didn't win her other term that's the only reason he did all you have to do is look how many blacks is on the police department one one black sergeant and if you test him anywhere anywhere I guarantee you he wouldn't be qualified to be a sergeant or police you never see him in the courthouse you know why because he don't have the education. He's not even qualified to be a police officer. He was grandfathered in. Look and see why all of these police officers of Brother Charleston P Police Department is steady leaving this force, black and white. Now, you have some white good ones on the force that's trying to make a difference. And they do make a difference when they own. But you look at some of my YouTube videos, I wasn't able to get to protection by some of the police officers here in Charleston, Missouri. But one thing about it, God see it all. Same with some of these preachers, bishops. These churches in this, in this area to me is a joke. And if, if you're not a part of the joke, then you shouldn't be offended. But some of them, that's all they doing is just getting money. These organizations, Susanna Wesley Family Learning Center, Lincoln University, I used to say the Sykes and Ascension. Anytime you a uh, university period and you got people that you know corrupted, you see what I'm saying? Letting drug dealers take children's arounds in your van. Letting individuals that don't have driver's license transport food and everything else to these government programs. Letting alcoholics work for you for two or three dollars and then you you getting 
hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're not taking care of God's business. But I want y'all to listen to what Martin Luther King had to say. You know one thing about him? He knew what was going on in this world. And he knew what it, what, what it would take to change it. And there shall come among them a great leader who with his wisdom and understanding shall break the chains and bonds which bind them, unshackle their wrists and ankles, their cobwebs from their eyes and ears, and thereby make them free. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you the Negro Moses of the 20th century, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., in a rally held at Los Angeles, California, June 17, 1962, as he addressed a gathering on the problems of civil rights and equality. And here is the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., at Zion Hill, as he talks of the dilemma and the challenge. The dilemma and the challenge facing the Negro today. You will remember that it was in the year of 1619 when the first Negro slaves landed on the shores of this nation. They were brought here from the soils of Africa and the Negro lived amid this system of slavery for 244 years. For all of these years he was a thing to be used, not a person to be respected. And even after slavery ended, the Negro discovered that he was confronting a new type of slavery because racial segregation is nothing but slavery covered up with certain niceties of complexity. And so the Negro lived with physical slavery 244 years. He has been a victim of racial segregation for almost 100 years. Now the Negro's dilemma is this, and it's a serious dilemma. In spite of the fact that we have been victims of slavery for 244 years, in spite of the fact that we have lived with segregated conditions for 100 years, the demands of history require that we be as productive, as resourceful, and as responsible as the people who never had these disadvantages. Here we are as a people having experienced political domination economic exploitation, segregation, and humiliation for well now 344 years, and yet the demands of history make it necessary for us to be as productive and as responsible as the people who never had these experiences. This is our dilemma. He who gets behind in a race must forever remain behind or run faster than the man in front. This is our dilemma. But this dilemma is at one and the same time a great challenge. We are challenged to mobilize our resources to mobilize all of the constructive forces that we can muster and to make a creative contribution in the life of our nation. And I would like to suggest this afternoon some of the things that we must do to grapple with this dilemma and meet the challenge of the hour. I would like to say first that we must develop and maintain a sense of dignity 
and self-respect. We must... We must not allow anybody or any force to make us feel that we do not count. We must believe in our souls that we are somebody, that we are significant, that we are worthful, and we must walk the streets of life every day with this sense of dignity and this sense of somebodiness. Y'all here in Martin Luther King, he sacrificed his life that we can be treated equal, that we didn't have to go through what we went through in 1619 when they brought us over here, brought our forefathers and foremothers over here on the Mayflower. Some of y'all that's out there doing all that black on black crime, killing, stealing, breaking in each other's houses, starting confusion, especially in Charleston, Missouri, for the 21 years I've been down there. Wake up, do your history. You see, you run your messenger away. You laugh and mock at him. Those that laugh and mock at me on their Facebook pages. They call me all type of things but a child of God. But if you notice, they call me a violent person, they call me a murderer, they call me a pedophile, call me a rapist. If that's the case, stop letting your children come around me. What judge you gonna think they're gonna let a pedophile and a rapist raise two little girls? My daughters is more respectful than the average one of these parents in Charleston, Missouri. You see, you may hear me say some violent things, but sometimes you can't just say nice things when a snake or a wolf is in your midst. You got to do something to get them off of you. I love all human beings. I don't care what race you are. But I won't let you disrespect me. Did you hear Martin Luther King said we need dignity, we need respect. Some of y'all don't know what respect is. The graveyards is full of people that's disrespecting other people. What y'all gonna do? You ain't gonna do it to me because I'm strong in the Lord. What y'all gonna do? Somebody gonna come down to Charles, Missouri one time. Those of you police that study doing what you're doing to me, those of you people in these organizations and ministers and all these neighbors, the things that y'all doing to me, you ain't gonna be able to do it to somebody else. Look around the world when people going into these places and just going shooting randomly. I pray it don't happen, but y'all asking for it. People like ISIS build up camps in Charleston, Missouri because of the racism. People form gangs because of some of the ignorant blacks that's in the town. But I'm not going to let y'all turn me around. Y'all educating my daughters to show them what a mother shouldn't be. What a parent shouldn't be. I don't care what y'all say about me. I'm going to keep on keeping on until God tell me, let the peace be still. Now you go put that on your Facebook page. You see, most of them that put this stuff on their Facebook page, they're snitches for the police department or the feds. Most of them that put this in on their Facebook page, look what's happening. Look at some of their people that's going to court against me with these organizations. Look what's happening to their families. You see, I don't wish nothing on you, but I can't stop what God doing. God don't like you messing with his people. I'm going to go and leave you with peace and the blessings of God. But you can't stop me. Only one can stop me is God. I'm going to say peace. Be still.